Times have changed and the R32 used to be the king of this category. It was the daddy to the GTI. But now the GTI can compete against it. And there are people that would genuinely say the GTI is better than the R32. Now, why is that? Now, when this car launched, this was naturally aspirated and this is a big engine for such a small car. Back then, turbocharging was a very powerful thing, but it wasn't maximized as well as it is now. Now, back then, being naturally aspirated, there's nothing more you can get out of this engine. But that was enough. The noise, the feeling, the drama of this car was enough to put it at the top. And the GTI with its lowly 197 horsepower was just an underdog to the uh, R32. But as time went on, people started realizing the potential that this car had and started unleashing it. Tuning companies spent a lot of money developing the tuning for this car. And now, with a stock KL3 Turbo, you can get 280 brake horsepower at these. And when you think about them side by side, 280 versus 250, also take into consideration, this car is a lot more light than this car because it hasn't got the four wheel drive or the heavy engine up front. Realistically, a GTI that's tuned will leave an R32. And this is why we're in the situation we're in where the argument of which is better, an R32 or a GTI. I want to give a nice warm welcome to Azadu. Azadu, thanks for coming down. Going on, good. So, Azadu, you own the Mark 5 GTI. I do, I do. How long have you had this car? Uh, this car, I think like coming up to two years maybe. Yeah? Know, yeah. Um, and you are a big Mark 5 GTI man, aren't you? Yeah, had one before, got another one. I see. So what is that about the GTI that keeps pulling you back? Do you know what it is, yeah? The GTI, everyone has their own different driving styles. Yep. And the GTI just suits me so well because the, the, it's the turbo with the DSG, with the light steering, mm. the size of the car. It just fits my, my driving style. Driving style, yes. So I feel like it just suits your persona. So it's one of those things, if you've left a car and then you go back to it, it says a lot about your relationship with that car. Exactly. You could argue the same with me on the R32. I had one, I sold it, and I bought this one. Exactly. So you could definitely say a lot. And um, obviously this one is not stock. My R32 is technically stock. I mean, it's NA with a few, few things done to it. But even then, it's not enough to make a big difference. But this is a lot. In terms of performance, the GTI from stock produces 197 brake horsepower and 280 newton meters of torque. That's from a four cylinder turbocharged unit and it's paired with a six speed DSG. But you can get this car with a six speed manual and it sends this part to the front wheels. Now, this particular engine in the normal GTI comes with a KO3 turbo. And one of the most common ones people do to make it stage three is slapping a KO4 turbo from the Edition 30. That then unleashes a lot more potential of this engine. Engine. First is first, running a stage two tune, yeah. pushing what 280 horsepower? 280 to 90, yeah. 280 to 90. Um, so that's one big thing. Um, then on top of that, you've obviously got the uh, R32 brakes. Yeah. So it's good stopping power. Um, anything else? Uh, custom exhaust. Yep. Yeah. So for the R32 rear end, which I bloody hate. <laughs> I bloody hate it. I mean, this is the second time this car's been on the channel for those that aren't aware. Um, I reviewed this car in completely stock form. If you watch the old video on this, you wouldn't even believe it's the same car. You would not believe it. And this car has changed so much in that time, hasn't it? And one key thing about this car is, it was already low back then. It was already low. Yeah. But you've put 19 inch um, uh, Pretorias, yeah. which are off a Mark 7, and they're gold. And the car's been lowered and adjusted for them, isn't it? Yeah. Cool. So, what's your, you, you're crazy about your car being quite low and do you want to explain your reasoning on that? Uh, I like it to be low because I, I just... When you go into a bend and when you're when you're like overtaking and stuff, yeah? Mm. As, as you do. It's just, you feel more connected to the car. You feel more connected to the road. And you get way more grip. You get and, way more feel as well. You know, like a, when, you're, when you're higher, it feels... You get a lot more body roll with yep. higher cars. And with this, you don't get as much. So, yeah. So I, you I like want that go car experience, basically. Like you want to feel like you're sat on the floor. Yeah. Right, sitting behind this car right now, I can tell I'm not sitting behind the R32. And the reasons 
for that R. So when you're setting an R32, you do have a few things that let you know that you're setting something that's very, very special. First thing is this silver carbon weave looking trim. This runs all across the interior. Next thing is the headdress, comes embossed with the R logo. Steering wheel also has an R logo on it. And my favorite thing about this car is actually the gauges. When they light up, they're white and blue. And also the pedals, they have the R logo embossed on them. All these little things are so minimal, but they really do lift the interior and let you know that you're sat in a very special cabin. Meanwhile, when you sit in the GTI, you do get a few things of its own as well. It says GTI on the steering wheel and it says GTI embossed. Now this one actually has a, these custom seats. So they don't look as good as this in a normal GTI, but it will stay GTI. And the trim, as you can see, doesn't have that carbon weave, but nevertheless, it is a nice car to be sat in, but the R32 does feel special. And the key one is also the gauges. Now the gauges in the R32, as I said, light up blue and white, and it looks very, very clean and crisp, especially in this day and age. But the GTI at night is blue and red, and it looks very old, similar to how a Mark IV Golf dials look. And that's where the key thing I'd say is, in the interior is the dials it really lets the car down one key difference within the r32 and the gta is obviously power and in terms of figures they are quite different in terms of performance with the r32 it packs 247 brake horsepower and 320 newton meters of torque. That's from a 3.2 liter naturally aspirated VR6. This particular car is also paired with a 6 speed DSG gearbox and it sends its power to all four wheels of our Haldex all wheel drive system. Now, being naturally aspirated in terms of tuning, there's very little extra horses that you can get out of this. Driving this car with the R32 brakes, it honestly feels like my R32. I can't tell any difference in that feel. But obviously the big thing is I can feel the front of the car is a lot more lighter. As I go into these bends, I don't feel like I'm nose heavy right now. And on top of that, as I'm turning on the bends, I can feel the front wheels are doing all the work. There is no assistance in the, with the back wheels. And I don't know which one I prefer, if I'm being honest. I feel like your car offers a lot more feel and it does feel more engaging. But the R32 will probably give you a lot more confidence going into a bend. But saying that because your car is so lowered, it probably makes up for that makes up for that penalty really well. This car feels incredibly stiff. You have to take turns at certain angles. You can't full lock it. <laughs> Otherwise you're gonna scrape, isn't it? The spaces. You're the bad person. One thing I noticed is you don't have DSG bands and such, but yeah, your car has this slur. Yeah. The gearbox does this like, and it just. I, I, I'll tell you something interesting here. Yeah? So, my, with my previous detail, I did my uh, exhausting bits. Yes. And when I had my secondary cats on, I had yep. Russell Gold Street 5. When I had my secondary cats on, it was giving good DSG parts. Right. But when I took that secondary cat off on the old GTI, yep. it lost the DSG parts. No, not lose it, but you, you get you got what you get now. Yeah, you're not getting that bang that the Golf R's and the SUs are known for, isn't it? Yeah, but if you want to hear a bang, pop it. 
Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Honestly, this is a very well-built machine. And the thing about GTIs is you're almost relying on the person to be in possession of it, to do a good job with it. Because if the wrong person owns it and they don't do the right mods and the right, you know, uh, performance uh, enhancements, then you know it's not going to be a, a great car to drive. That's why I got the car stock. I'm looking for a stock. Yeah, it's very you, hard to find a stock in German. But can you blame them though? They're, they're so highly tunable and they're so cheap to do and they're cheap to buy. It's so accessible. And this is where the R32 is completely different because the R32 is not so easy accessible. The road tax is just under 700 pound a year. And most people that have the R32 are like proper car enthusiasts. And, and they don't want to change it. Yeah. And realistically, if you do modify an R32, you are going to lose value on it because it's such a almost an enthusiast car, it's a collector's car almost, where mm. when you touch it, you are going to lose value. Yeah. You don't want to drill holes in the diffuser and put a, a, a diffuser on and whatnot. You know, you don't want to do those things. But on a GTI, you can because the next guy that wants to buy it is going to do it himself anyway. But the thing as well is this, this one's not about the noise. With the R32, you want to hear it sing. It's yeah, like an opera. Exactly. You know, you got your little glasses on. But this makes you feel like you're 12 years old playing it does. Midnight Club. It does. something that I experienced with my other R32 that I owned so it's nothing new so it's very hard for me at this point to say it's a so what R32 you think, feature you think it's a R32 thing I don't know if there's any owners that are watching this video I'd love to know if they've got the same experience but I do do you, I, do you know what I, I personally think yeah, it's a it's a way bigger engine 3.2 yeah and I think there's, there's not much space obviously you can see there's not much yeah, space inside, there is inside the engine bay and I feel like it's maybe an overheating thing maybe it's hot could be very well could be would love to know if anyone else has any similar experiences or if their r32 doesn't work as well as mine and um, as you're driving even at slow speeds can you feel like there's a four there's a four four drive system working with you yeah it's like i don't have to explain it but you know when i'm when i'm turning yeah i feel like the it's, it's just, it levels itself out it's, it's it's weird for me to say this but it's like that entire car is turning I know, I know, basically, uh, uh, the best uh, way to describe it is this R32 is a front-wheel drive car. Now, let's not forget that. Yeah, yeah. The Haldex system isn't a proper four-wheel drive system. It's really not. It's a way of making a front-wheel drive car a bit more better around the corners. That's the way I look at Haldex system. Now, with that in mind, the way I see it is when you turn into a corner, the car basically sends a bit of power to the rear to help correct itself. Whereas on the GTI, you're alone because it's just yeah. the front wheels doing all that work. And then can you feel the added extra weight of that four-wheel drive system? I can. I actually can. And on top of that, there's a bigger engine up front as well. Yeah, maybe that's that's the, that's another factor to the DST yeah. being jerky. Yeah. Because it's pulling more weight. It's it's a lot of weight because mm. you've got the bigger engine, 
then you've got the four-wheel drive system. That's a lot of penalties for the R32. Yeah. And on paper, five, 50, 50 horsepower faster than the GTI from factory. But when you take into those considerations, it, it draws the gap uh, closer, if that makes sense. The GTI, it feels much better. Like, you know when you, know when you get that wheel spin? Yeah, yeah like, I agree. There's get, more feedback. There's so, way more feedback. Yeah, yeah. This is a very point and shoot. Yeah. But with the point and shoot, you get that glorious noise. But that's, that's literally all you get, isn't it? Mm. Um, but roads that like what we're on now, like this, this kind of car, golf, oh, this, these kind of things, perfect. Yeah, Love, because lovely car you can drive. do you can do the speed limit around the bend. If it's a sixty yeah. mile per hour, you can actually do six seventy confidently. Yeah, but yeah, with my GTI, I would feel a bit scared to go into. Yeah, uh, because you might understeer into a tree. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> literally, you'll be scared of that. Yeah. Um, How's the brakes? Because I know you have R32 brakes in your car. I do. I, I, I love them, man. I was going to say are, this. They man. are damn good brakes, aren't they? <laughs> um, yeah, they're proper. I love the R32. I've got the R32 brakes on, on my on my GTI. Mm. And I've got nothing bad to say about them, man. They they stop whenever you want them to stop. Even the pedal feel is amazing, isn't it? Yeah, proper. You can have good brakes, but sometimes even the pedal feel isn't the, even, isn't the best way. Yeah, when you like, tap it. Because I've, I've had a... Obviously, I've had, an, I've had another GTI with the stock brakes. Yeah. Hated it. Hated it so much. Mm. It's like... But with the R32 base, you feel connected with the car. Like your, I foot, agree. your foot feels like you're part of the car. Sounds so good. You don't need DSG bags in this car, do you? You don't. Yes, you don't. The, obviously, like there's a there's a big uh, Gita R32 rivalry thing. Yeah, on. there is. But um, it sounds so good, man. The R32 sounds. It so sounds. Good. Um, it's the. I think it's the best sounding six cylinder made. I, I, I think the F type stepping up. There's only the V6 one. Yeah. But apart from that, what else is there? I mean, yeah, you could put a straight six in there. You know, like an E46 M3. Mm. But nothing's like this. Yeah, hundred percent. Obviously, uh, like the age that we are, we saw these cars growing up and yep. stuff. And when you just see them fly past you, it's just yeah. And the thing about this car is echo. So look, we're in a very Foresty place, you just know that there's someone in the house and they're going to be hearing it. Yeah. Sounds glorious, doesn't it? Sounds so good, man. You just can't believe your right foot can make such a noise, isn't it? Lay off the gas. I love the crackles. The, the crackles you got on this is nice. They're Open so nice. minimal, aren't they? And do you know what it is, yeah? Mm. I'm slightly annoyed at you for talking while the exhaust, exhaust tone was on. Because I just don't want anyone to talk. I don't want to hear nothing. Uh, I just want to put everything on mute. I just yeah, want to hear this, it. This isn't a POV video, I'm afraid, mate. <laughs> such a nice, such a nice sound. Still on, still on the steel. Look at echo through the woods. Have I got a smile on? I feel like I've got a smile. You have got a smile. You got a massive grin. I look. I feel like I'm sitting with the Grinch right now. the thing so when I had this car without the tune I used to put my foot down and let off oh it's quiet now I've lost the there's exactly. nothing to follow it because then it makes you want to push the car all the time exactly time. so you, there's no there's not a moment where you want to let off because you just want to hear it singing yeah but now you let it off and now you've got the backup dancers the, the backup exactly. the and backup it's, it's, it's not obnoxiously loud like my it's DJ. not it's really not it's so light and it's just overruns that's all they are exactly um and this is the way when people do pops and bangs or crackles, they usually go for these ones that sound like thunder or, you know. Yeah, like my, my one is just, it's like nuclear bombs just. Exactly, up, up, up. exactly. But it suits the personnel of the car of what you're doing it's, with it's the car. Like, yeah, it's like GTA, it's like a, for me, it's an like Asbol car. Exactly, whereas this isn't. This is more of a classic car. And yeah. Those pops and back, those pops and crackles, they're not obnoxious. They're very, very minimal. And I think only it enhances the noise. Million dollar question. The R32 does cost a lot more than a GTI if you're buying one in the second-hand market right now. Yeah. Would you buy an R32? Um, 
Yeah, I'll give you my honest, honest answer, yeah? Yeah. So, with the, with the current, what, how we, how, how the world is at the moment, yep. obviously the EVs are coming in yes. 2030. Yes. Now, if you asked me this five years ago, yep. I would have been like, nah, man, GTI all day, all day, every day, GTI, come on, GTI's a better car, you got boost. Yep. I, I like boost, you yes. like any cars, I like yes. boost. So, I would have said that, GTI, better car, you, you can get the car for half the price, and you can tune it up, yep. blah, 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 blah. Spend money on it, so, yeah. Um, but with the EVs coming, I would 100% buy, buy an R32. The reason why is because it sounds so good and... With I, EVs, speed is not a problem. Yeah, for me, I, I don't know obviously how EVs are gonna, gonna go, but the EVs that I've driven, they're really fast. Yeah. They're, they're really fast. But that time we're gonna miss the sound of a car. And exactly. That time, that time you don't want, you're not gonna want to hear a GTI. Obviously, some people like the sound of GTIs. Yep. Um, they're not a bad sounding car. But this is a musical instrument. Yeah, this has a nice tone. This has a nice tone. I'm just, I just, I just want to hear it again. I'm just gonna. Like, that, that is amazing, and I'm gonna miss that. We are I'm gonna, in like 2040 or yeah, whenever it is, yeah. Uh, when it's just EVs, yeah. we're gonna miss that sound. Exactly, we're not gonna have it. Yeah, and that's why I love these cars because we don't have them forever. So my thing is enjoy them whilst we have it because speed is always going to be there. It's not a problem. We, think about it. We're, we're one of the last generations that are going to get to enjoy these cars. And this is the thing. We need to enjoy these cars while they're still moderately available to drive and not that bad to own. We have to do it. We owe it to the car. That's that's the way I see it personally. Mm. And that's why I respect the GTA. I think they're amazing cars, but I'm not ready. I can't give up what these cars offer. I can't do it. After this review, I can say it's a crime to compare the R32 and the GTI. They're both brothers with very different setups and the way they feel when pushing on. The R32 is raw and feels like a 90s car, whereas the GTI feels like a boy racer that's modern. There's a reason why most R32s are untampered as the great machines out of the box, whereas the GTIs get heavily modified as they need work to reach their full potential both cosmetically and tuning wise. Realistically, someone looking to buy an R32 will never settle for a GTI and vice versa, so how can they be put in the same breath as one another? Just because the tuned GTI is faster doesn't take anything away from the R32, but the GTI is an excellent machine at the price they're worth alongside the aftermarket modifications available. The key point is, the GTI will be missed, but the R32 will be grieved when EVs are the only thing we can buy. So if you feel any emotions towards the R32, go and buy one once you can. If you enjoyed this video, do remember to like, comment, share, subscribe and see you soon in the next one.